Welcome back, everyone. I really appreciate you stopping by. This is Jennifer McGuire, and today I'm going to talk about how to achieve a foil stamped image. Now, I have done a similar video a long time ago, but I've experimented some more and found some improvements. But I'll link to my first video here if you want to check it out. Also, in my last video, I showed how to do foiling with die cutting. So between these two videos, you have lots of techniques that you can try to add some sparkle and shine to your cards. Now, I will say I tried this with lots of different stamps, and I found foiling of a stamped image is best when you have any outline stamp. So I'll have a few examples for you today, and I encourage you to give it a try. Let's go ahead and start with a background stamp, doing foiled, foiling of a background stamp. I will be using the Simon Says Stamp Gerber Daisy Background Stamp. This is just such a beautiful stamp. You could do tone on tone background. You could stamp and color these. You could even cut flowers out of it. Well, today we're going to do foiling. I'm using my Misty stamping tool simply because I have it on hand. However, you could just put the stamp face up on your work surface ink it up, and then press your paper onto it if you prefer. I have some 110 pound white cardstock here. I'll link below to what I use. I use my anti-static powder tool, and then I inked up my stamp with Versamark ink and then pressed it very firmly onto the paper. Now I'm adding Hero Arts clear embossing powder, and I will heat set that. So basically I'm just clear embossing an image on my cardstock. Now you can do this on white cardstock or colored cardstocks, and I have a bunch of examples to show you. Now I experimented with different ways of doing this foiling, and I'm going to share with you the one that gives the best results. Let's start with this example first. I just clear heat embossed that same image, but this time on black cardstock. Now I'm going to use Deco Foil today, which is a heat transfer foil. This is the Rainbow Shattered Deco Foil. It's just beautiful. Now the sandwich that I create to make this transfer when I put it through my laminator is I have an extra piece of cardstock. So that's the white piece that you see there. I put that down, then my heat embossed piece, and then the foil on top with the pretty side facing up. I put that in a piece of folded parchment paper, or you can do folded typing paper. So now I'll close the parchment paper and feed this through my laminator and I put the folded edge of the parchment paper in first. I'm using the Royal Sovereign Laminator. Any laminator should work for this. You want it to be good and hot before you do this. So I let it warm up for about 20 minutes. And I have this on the five mil setting. If you have a mink machine, you could do setting number three. But again, try this with any laminator you may have. I use laminators a lot in my craft room, and this is just one of the many ways. Okay, so now I can remove that, and you can see the beautiful transfer of that rainbow foil. Now that spot in the bottom there, that's my fault. I didn't heat emboss that completely. I actually didn't melt my powder entirely. So just ignore that little bottom right corner there. But the rest of it, you can see how the foil transferred, and you get this really amazing result. I find that foil is most impressive on black cardstock or colored cardstocks, but I do want to show you what this looks like on white. So I have that white cardstock background that I created earlier, where I clear heat emboss the flowers. I'm putting that on top of another piece of white cardstock that just kind of acts like a shim, and I'm putting some glimmering gold deco foil on top. Put that in my folded parchment and feed that through my laminator. You might have to experiment. Every laminator is a little bit different. You might want to run it through twice. You might want to try it without a shim. Just experiment a little bit on scrap paper. But this is what I found worked best for me. Now notice the edges are messy, that's okay. I'm going to trim this down and I have that nice beautiful section in the middle. Let's just do a couple more. This is some teal colored cardstock. It's a Hero Arts Paradise cardstock. I clear heat embossed. And then I ran it through my laminator with teal foil. And here you can see the fun tone on tone look. I really get the best results doing this when I use an outline image. These flowers are all outlines. Solid images don't work as well, but you can definitely try it out. 
And by the way, when you peel off that extra foil, check it out. You could glue this down onto white cardstock and look at that fun reverse pattern that you get. So don't throw that away. There are many things that you can do with it and I'll probably show some of those in a future video. Okay, let's go ahead and make a few cards with these backgrounds and then I'll show you how to foil some other images. Now for this one, I used the Simon Says Stamp Daisy Bouquet Stamp Set. From this, I stamped and colored a daisy and I'll use some of the sentiments on some of my other cards too. By the way, I tried doing that foiling technique with these daisy images and it worked great. So you definitely could use this for the technique. But for this example, I decided to color one of the daisies. So I stamped it with Gina K Amalgam Black Ink, which is a Copic friendly ink. And I stamped that onto white Nina cardstock. I then colored it in very quickly with the color Copic markers you see listed at the top there. I chose these colors because it matched the cardstock and foil of the background that you see there to the left. After I finished coloring, I cut out this image right up against the stamping, so right up against the edge. To give it a nice finished look, I did a trick that my friend Kathy Rakusen taught me. I'll link to her here. If you cut out a stamped image right to the edge, go around the cut edge with a black marker. This gives it a nice finished look that makes a huge difference. Here I'll do a close up. On the left hand side of this flower, I traced with the black marker and you can see it's nice and finished. On the right hand side, I haven't done that yet, and you can kind of see the white edge. It looks kind of unfinished. That's something that I recommend doing and it doesn't take long. Next, I'm going to create a background piece for our card using the Simon Says Stamp Eyelet Arch Borders. Those are the dies that you see there on the left, and I'm going to use the one that creates the larger eyelets. I die cut that at an angle on a piece of white cardstock and you see that over there to the right. I also have trimmed down my foiled piece. You can see how pretty it looks now. I cut off all the rough edges and I'm gluing that onto a four and a quarter by five and a half inch white note card. I then am going to add this piece on top covering up some of the foil. Now I don't want that covered foil to go to waste so I'm actually going to trim it away because it'd be hidden anyways and save that piece for another note card. Whenever you have a beautiful piece like this, no sense covering it up, instead cut it away and use it on another card. So the top piece there will go to another card and then I'll take this bottom piece and glue it onto our note card. Now before I add the white decorative edge piece there, I wanna stamp a sentiment on it. I'm using the Simon Says Stamp Leafy Frame Stamp Set. I've used this before in a video. Really like the sentiments in this, and we're actually going to foil some of those frames later in this video. But for this card, I just used the simple hello greeting. I stamped that on my white panel and added that to the card also. And now I'm putting some adhesive on the back of my flower that I cut out and adding that on top. So in this case, I just let some of the foil background show. I felt like if I used the entire foil background, it would be a little too loud. So by covering up part of it and then saving that extra part for another card, I'm able to create two cards at once. I really like the look of foil with tone on tone, where I did the teal foil on the teal cardstock. And because I used a background stamp that has fine lines to it, it foils beautifully. Now here's my extra card that I did with that leftover piece. I simply added two foiled strips and then a hello there sentiment, which is from that Daisy Bouquet stamp set. Very simple, but because we have the shine of the foil, it adds some fun to it. Now before we do foiling of some other stamped images, let's look at the cards that I made with the other backgrounds that I created earlier. This is the one where I did the white cardstock with the gold foil. Since it's a little more subtle, I decided to use the whole piece on a card. And this is a four and a quarter by five and a half inch yellow note card. I colored my flower this time with yellow Copic markers and I've listed the colors above. For the hello sentiment, I used the Simon Says Stamp Oh Hello There die, but I just used the word hello. I die cut it three times from Hero Arts pitch black cardstock and glued them on top of each other for some dimension and then I added that directly onto our card. Next up, we have the black background that I created with the rainbow foil. On this, I added a border that I created with the Simon Says Stamp dot scallop border die. 
And then I added a sentiment with black ink, and that is from the Simonses Stamp Daisy Bouquet stamp set. I wanted to keep this card very simple since there's so much color and shine from that foiling. That's one of the nice things about foil is you can create a simple card that has lots of fun to it. Okay, our last background foiled card features the Simon Says Stamp CZ Design Parental Props stamp set. Now this has mom and dad sentiments. However, you don't have to use the word mom and dad and you can use the greetings without that. So you can use, I am so grateful for you. Thanks for everything that you do. You are my hero. I love you so much. Well, I removed the word dad and I stamped some of the sentiments to create this a card that could be given to anyone. But the funny thing is, is I'm actually giving this to my dad for Father's Day. He loves Gerber daisies and I thought the colors would be perfect for him. So I probably should have left the word dad in there, but I wanted to show you that you could get more out of that stamp set by just rearranging your sentiments. I'm always trying to look at my stamp sets differently to get new uses out of them. Okay, let's do some more foiling. This time I'm going to foil a regular stamp image instead of a background. I'm using a outline wreath image from the Leafy Frames stamp set that I showed you earlier. Instead of using folded parchment, this time I'm using folded copy paper just to show you that works. On a piece of Hero Arts sand cardstock, I clear heat embossed my wreath, just like we did earlier, basic clear heat embossing. I have a shim of white cardstock that I'm putting behind it, and then gold foil on top. Putting that in my folded copy paper and feeding that through my laminator. This applies both heat and pressure, which causes the foil to stick to our embossing. And look at those beautiful results. Let's go ahead and give this one a little bit of color. I decided to use colored pencils on this, and I just try to stay off of the foil so I don't like rub it off. I didn't seem to have any problems with it. I just added some basic coloring. I then die cut a circle from cardstock and stamped a sentiment in the center of it from the Simonses Stamp Leafy Frames stamp set. I actually white heat embossed that so it would stand out a bit. There you can see the foil outline that just catches the light so nicely. It does have a lot more sparkle and smoothness than if you use gold embossing powder. It's a big difference in real life. Let's do another example using that same image, but some different colors. This time I clear heat embossed on some Hero Arts Paradise cardstock, putting my shim behind it, and then adding sparkling silver foil on top, running that through my laminator. That will press the foil onto our embossing powder, and you get the smooth results when you peel it away. You can do sticky embossing powder and then press your foil onto it, but this gives much smoother results I've found when you use your clear embossing powder and run it through your laminator. Just to give a tone on tone look, I'm coloring in my flowers and leaves with my Versamarker pen. That just makes the paper a little bit darker wherever you color it. You could use markers there if you wanted to. I then stamped a sentiment in the center with Gina K Ocean Mist ink and created a very simple card. But because I use that sparkly silver foil, it catches the light nicely. And by the way, the results of this are much smoother and shinier than if you used a glitter embossing powder. Okay, one last example with the stamp because I just thought it was so beautiful. This time I did gold foil on a white cardstock back panel and I colored it with the same Copic markers that I used earlier. I just tried to stay in the lines a little bit. It was easy to do. And there you can see the super shiny outline image that we have, thanks to the clear heat embossing, the foil, and the laminator. I really hope you give this technique of foiling your stamped images a try. You might need to do a little bit of practice, but it's definitely worth it when you figure out what works best for your cardstock and your laminator. So much fun to do, and I am about to go have a huge party because I did a video under 15 minutes, and I can't believe it. I just, <laughs> I'm shocked. Anyways, the supplies I used are below in my YouTube description. My blog has much more information, so I'll link to it here. You can check that out. Also, there are two other foiling videos for you. Thanks once again. As always, I will never stop saying it. I appreciate you stopping by. Have a great week, and we'll see you soon.